All right, so what I've started with is a, a light pencil drawing for my basic composition, right? I'm gonna lift my camera and just to kind of show you my setup here, okay? So I've got a couple of different shoes. I've got a croc and I've got a boot, right? My position is a little more out this way, so it has, has it at a little more of an angle than what you're seeing here. But what I started with is, um, is a light pencil drawing, right? So I wanna get my forms in place. This should be pretty light because I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna switch part of this demo. I'm gonna do that in charcoal. So if I do a charcoal drawing, I can still do the preliminary drawing work with, with pencil line, but I, you know, again, I wanna keep it nice and light because if I use heavy pencil, when I start to put charcoal on top of that, the graphite creates a kind of a slick area, so we don't want to make too too heavy of a pencil line on that. Um, and then I'll also probably do just a little bit of a, a pencil demo as well. So I'm going to take a stick of my a stick of my charcoal. This is this particular brand, but you don't don't have to have as long as you're using any kind of compressed charcoal, works great. So when I, when I think about starting with my value, I wanna make sure that I'm identifying the places in my objects that are really light. Now, this is a black boot. And if I look at that black boot, obviously it's a dark object, but it still has some lights. And what I notice is that there's like a, a highlight that's happening here, right? There's some more lights that are happening kind of in this area. Right? So there's some highlights actually throughout the whole kind of top section of it. Right? So I want to make sure that I'm leaving some of that the white of the paper. Right? The yellow croc in the back, even though it's yellow, it's a light color, is still going to have some dark areas in it. Right? So I want to make sure that I'm leaving the white of the paper for places that are really bright and light. But I'm also going to want to make sure I have some really heavy dark sections, truly black sections of value, right? So I'm going to go ahead and kind of address this first section of the upper portion of my boot. And I'm going to start with, um, this is kind of like that mass drawing approach. I'm using the side of that stick of charcoal. And a little bit darker as it gets closer to the, the sole, but I'm kind of moving, and moving my charcoal around the highlight as I see it. And again, because it's black, I'm probably safe in putting some amount of value throughout that whole section except for those places that are really super, super bright, right? So I'm leaving that section un, untouched with my charcoal. But I'm going to keep going here and put another layer. So this is my first layer. I'm going to go back with another layer. Kind of gets dark here. The edge of the boot is right about there and the tip of it the toe of it gets pretty dark it kind of tucks back away from the light of there and I'm turning my little stick of charcoal here to kind of indicate some of some of these little kind of wrinkles, the creases that happen in our boots when we wear them. So I want to get fairly close to a true black in some places. But there's a lot of texture happening with my charcoal. You know, for some of us, that that might be kind of part of part of the, the quality of your drawing, part of the characteristic of your drawing, 
If you if you prefer to smooth it out, let's see, I've got a piece of paper towel here I can use. You know, obviously you can use your fingers to do this. You can also use things like little bits of paper towel. And one good thing about using a piece of paper towel or even a cotton ball is that you're not, you know, for one thing, you're not having to kind of use use your your finger, dirty your fingers all the time. But you can also shape that paper towel. I don't want to go over the highlights and cover them. But what I'm doing here is just kind of pushing the value into the fiber of the paper a little bit. And I can also, you know, this is something that you can also do here with, with a piece of folded paper towel. I'm going to make a little triangle. So I'm kind of keeping the, the, ed, the, the tip of it tight and kind of rolling it up into a cone, right? And so I can use something like this to smooth out you know, smaller areas. And the other important tool, obviously, is going to be your eraser. So one thing that I notice here along the bottom edge of my boot is that there's kind of a sharp shift in value and the sole of the boot kind of catches the light right there where it hits the sole. Right? So I'm going to take that out a little bit. And then one thing I also notice about the highlight is that there's maybe a little bit of more of a gradual transition happening there. So I'm going to kind of pull that together a little more. And I can also go back with my charcoal and put in some of those darks that I still, still need to add. And then sometimes using the flat side of your eraser to pull back some of those lights where you may need to is handy. And can also be used to kind of feather out your, your value work. Um, as I continue through my boot, there are going to be places that have some really kind of tight, tight, sharp details, right? For example, like this buckle. I can certainly come up against that with a point of my charcoal and literally draw around it to kind of keep the sharpness in place, right? So in this drawing, we're not just using the flat side, which is what I've done here, but we can also use the tip of it to create those sharp details of something like that, like that buckle, right? So the other aspect of our drawing, you know, I'm going to stick with charcoal here for a second and then show you a couple things with pencil. But the other thing about our drawing is that it is an overall composition. We have two shoes and those are the focus of our composition. But there are, you know, for example, the, the sole of the shoe extends beyond my boot to something like this. The, the width of the sole something like that and then I would need to shade a little bit of this part of it because there's a little bit of value in there but what I want to illustrate for you right now is the idea that thinking about the whole composition we also want to think about the value before the areas around it right so I'm gonna go ahead and bring a really dark value right up against the bottom edge of my shoe. And I'm going to push that value all the way to the edge of my paper. And this stuff is pretty quick to do because you're obviously using the whole flat side of your charcoal, right? It goes pretty quick. And because I've done this, 
I've already kind of automatically created really nice strong contrast up against the light edge of my object and it hasn't taken me long to do it all, right? That's one of the advantages of using charcoal for this, right? So you can, it's possible to do these kind of detailed controlled things in the object, but background space and creating those kind of immediate contrasts goes really quickly. And then right along the edge of that that I just added, I might take my eraser and just kind of crisp up that section a little bit. And instead of kind of hitting, brushing those eraser, I call them eraser boogers. So instead of using your hand to wipe them away, you know, what I try to do is to keep a clean piece of paper towel and to use that to, to clean off your eraser bits. You can also use a very dry, you wanna make sure that it's very dry. If you have a dry brush, a paint brush, you can use that to wipe your eraser bits off, right? If you do it with your hand, you've got all this stuff on your hand, and you're simply putting the stuff, you're putting the gray back onto your paper. So it's good to, to use something like those objects to, to avoid doing that. So let's really quickly switch to pencil. I'm gonna grab my, my 6B pencil and the, the drawing itself was done, I think I used a 2B, but I'm ready to, to put in my shading now. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch to my 6B pencil. And the places of, for example, you know, around this buckle, let's say that this is kind of a medium value. The cross hatching technique is simply the approach of putting in a whole bunch of parallel lines, one right next to another, to create an area of tone, right? It's to assign a value. So I've got cross-hatching lines moving in this direction, but to kind of blend them together a little more, I'm gonna go ahead and change the direction and put another layer of parallel lines, one on top of another, to make it an even darker. And if I want to darken that even more, I'm going to go ahead and change the direction again and put another layer next to that, on top of that. Now, this is kind of, you know, the cross-hatching technique to kind of keep it kind of linear looking so you can see the lines. But if you're someone who wants to kind of blend it out and to, to make it look like a little, you know, like it's just an area of gray, right? It's not, we don't recognize the lines anymore. You can simply take your, take that same basic approach, but put the lines right next to one another so there's no space in between. And this is more like shading in solid sections. It helps when your pencil is not really sharp because that kind of helps keep uh, the, the shading look a little softer. And what I also like to do is also with this technique to change direction because if you keep layering one on top of another like this, you tend to kind of have little patches of shading. So keep that direction moving as you continue, switch directions. And then if I need that to be darker, and eventually I do, right, I want some of these areas to be really dark, then I'm gonna wanna take my pencil and really dig in there and get towards a true black value. So that some places in my drawing, even though I'm using pencil, will be really super dark black and you don't see any of the white of the paper coming through in those places. And the thing about pencil is that obviously you have maybe a little more, more control, right? You're more familiar with using pencil. But this little area here took me a little longer to do than this big area of charcoal up at the top, right? Because 
you know, pencil is a small point and it takes a little bit longer to, uh, to work with that. But the one advantage of using pencil are, you know, in little nooks and crannies like this in the buckle, I'm gonna be able to very, very easily get into those tight spaces to define shapes, right, quite easily as well. And sometimes the, the detail work that is possible with a pencil can feel a little bit easier, right, because you're dealing with something that's a little bit less pigmented and, you know, sharpening it up to a fine point, you know, makes, makes all of that stuff pretty easy to work with, okay? So in your drawing, you're gonna have some areas that are gonna be really black, right? Whether it's pencil or charcoal, but you're also gonna have some areas that you want to leave white. And while this whole sole might not be exactly white, I might, you know, put just a little bit of of gray here at the top because it's not really catching the light like it is down here, right? You're gonna have some differences between light, medium, and all the way to the end of the value scale, okay? So we're gonna have two shoes here, and then underneath the shoes, I also have some cast shadows going on, right? So if I show you again the shoes themselves, let's see, here we go. So you see some shadows under here, and those are going to be really nice to be able to, to add to my composition. So even though I've got, whoa, <laughs> sorry about that, hazards of using a, a webcam. So even though I've got a really dark section here at the top, down here at the bottom, I'm going to have some, some really nice cast shadows down here, and one thing I can do is to to put my charcoal right up against the edge of my shoe. And I've got a really nice kind of dark black shadow that happens right up against the, the bottom edge of my, the top of my boot. But I might not necessarily want it to be rough looking like that. I might not necessarily want it to be as dark as that for my cast shadow. So what I'm going to do again, I'm going to take my piece of paper towel and just kind of pull that out a little bit. And I'm going to extend the shape of my shadow as well, right? Because it came down a little bit further. So I just put the dark charcoal up against the edge of it, but now I'm pulling it downward to extend the shape of the shadow. So sometimes I have a whole area of tone that I want to create, but I don't want it to, to be really dark and heavy and have a lot of texture. You can oftentimes put a little bit of charcoal in there and then take a paper towel and just pull that value out so that you're able to kind of extend the shape of that tone, right? Extend the shape of that value, right? And it's, you know, really quick and easy to do that. This is a little harder to do with pencil because you're, you know, you're kind of doing it in light layers all the way out, right? And then you're going darker with, with more layers of pencil up against it where it needs to be darker, but still, still possible, right? So hopefully that helps in terms of the approach to creating a drawing using